Hey everybody, hope y'all are doing well. It's Monday and I'm excited because I'm finally doing my reviews for volume eight and volume nine of the Rascal Does Not Dream series. The Sister Venturing Out Light Novel and the Knapsack Kid Light Novel. And I'm sorry I got this out a lot later than what I wanted to initially get these out. Uh, I did enjoy these reads when I first originally ran through the read throughs for these, but I ended up rereading these later on because of time constraints and stuff like that. And just not having everything fresh in my head to be able to properly talk about these and try to do a review for it. So I just recently did my rereads of them and enjoyed it a heck of a lot, just as much as I did when I did read them originally. And yeah, so just kind of talking about how much I enjoyed it, like it touched on so many different things that I wanted to see out of the story, setting up new things for the future, touching on loose ends that weren't kind of tied up at the end of the Dreaming Girl movie or at the end of season one of the anime, things like Kaide, things like Sakata's parents, the mother and father. It was just awesome to get this story, this uh, series, the Rascal Does Not Dream series with new content, new stories and stuff like that that we haven't seen yet. And it was just an awesome thing to experience seeing these characters again or reading about these characters, uh, seeing what uh, lies ahead in the future for them, just different obstacles that they have to go and overcome when it comes to this story and kind of growing up and just all kinds of different things of that nature uh, that I did want to touch on a little bit more in detail in this review. I just uh, wanted to get my feelings out there uh, for how much I did enjoy it overall. So the story does kick right off with Sakata dreaming about the little Mai Sakurajima and I didn't believe that the little Mai Sakurajima was going to be prevalent in the story until volume 9 and it definitely was a little bit more focused and prevalent in volume 9 but we did get a little glimpse of her within uh, volume 8 to kind of set up the future events for volume 9 which was nice to see. There was a lot of different important characters in this story th like little callbacks and stuff that I did enjoy a lot. Seeing the importance and the impact of what Panda Kaide had on Sakata and even on Kaide now because at the end of season 1 of the anime and the Dreaming Girl movie because Kaide really wasn't like super focused in that movie. Um, we didn't get to see Kaide and how like things progressed with her, what she thought about the old Kaide because you know she just recently regained her memories. What was her psyche like? What was her mindset like? Was she wondering about the previous Kaide that she doesn't really remember at that point? Um, how were things playing out for her? Was she still making progress when it came to getting a little bit better with going outside and trying to acclimate herself back into to normal everyday life and going outside again, going to school, studying, things like that, because we know that Panda Kaide was making some progress with that. She was pushing herself and working so hard to go out there and to uh, try to go out in the world again and experience things and uh, try to become a little bit more normal and stuff and get back to normalcy. And with the Kaide regaining her memories, what was she doing at that point? Was she going to regress and take some steps back and stay back inside her house? because you know a lot of the stuff that did happen with all that progress it was with the panda kaide it wasn't with this kaide or was she going to keep taking steps forward and keep going to school or try to go to school like i said progress and try to get acclimated back into normal life and try to get over the adolescent syndrome and trauma and stuff that she was experiencing at that time and it was definitely great to see that she was taking further steps to get acclimated back to things or to at least put in the effort to try to. It wasn't all the way there. She wasn't actually going and attending class with all of the students and stuff like that, but she was still actually going to school, walking to school, like I believe like every day or most days uh, and studying in the nurse's office at least. You know, that that is a big step from where she was previously. So she was doing some good there and taking some steps forward, like I said. There was a big plot point in this story of things that needed to take place, you know, with Sakata, in his future going forward, possibly going to university or what his future plans were going to look like. And then with Kaide in particular too, with her moving from junior high to go to high school, where was she going to go? How were things going to look like with her transcripts and things like that? Because she had been out of school for so long with everything that was going on with her adolescent syndrome, with the panda Kaide, you know, kind of staying at home a bunch of the time, trying to work towards getting back into normalcy and stuff. And she was still kind of, you know, 
uh, studying on her own and doing all of those things and trying to help herself, even with the hard work and effort that Panda Kaida was putting in to study during this time that she was at home still, uh, was it going to be enough? It didn't look like it was going to be enough and it was going to be very tough, an uphill battle for Kaide to get into a good high school with the lack of transcripts that they had in grades for her, with her, you know, being out of school and kind of being a little bit behind on what normal like kids at that time, what level of learning they were currently at at that point, because like I said, she was not in school, so she wasn't able to catch up and getting the proper teaching that she needed at that time, even with Panda Kaide doing the best that she could at that time studying at home. So how are things going to play out for her and where did she want to go? And one of the big things that did happen was that Kaede wanted to go to Minagahara High where Sakata was going to school. And it was going to be a little bit, like I said, of an uphill battle on to get into Minagahara High because it is a very uh, hard school to get into. The entrance exams are very hard and they have higher standards. And a lot of kids like to try to apply and go to the school and attend the school. And they don't always have slots available because of so many kids wanting to go into there and trying to test into this school uh, so they can be able to get in. So it was going to be very difficult, especially with having a uh, lack of transcripts on her side, lack of grades from the previous year year and stuff all that time that she went without being in school like normally and stuff so that was going to be a little bit difficult on her side like I said so Sakata Sakata's father the counselor Miwako and Kaede were all trying to figure out what would be the next best steps for Kaede where did she want to go did she really still want to go to Minagahara High or did she want to go somewhere that was a little bit more realistic and was going to be easier for her to get into and she uh, had her mind set on Minagahara High it seemed even though the counselor seemed kind of against it and she wanted her to not do that because it was going to be like less likely of a chance to happen and she wanted to be more realistic with it but she still wanted to go to Minagahara High but she was very you know understanding of that and was trying to help them uh, go that route uh, even if it was kind of an unrealistic kind of situation because uh, they had entrance exams coming up and that was going to be a large portion of what determined if she was going to be able to get into Minagahara High and I believe there's like interviews that took place with it as well so she needed to study up get to that level to where she could take these entrance exams and then actually you know kill it and get into Minagahara High that was like a lot of what this was hanging on so she studied super hard to be able to get to that point to be able to take the tests and stuff confidently uh, with a lot of help from Sakata, from my Sakurajima, from Nadaka. Nadaka he played a big role in this uh, too with getting closer to Kaide and helping her out, supporting her. A lot of people like provided support for Kaide during this time to try to get her uh, learning, you know, like her academic level up to the point where she needed to take these exams and do well on them. And speaking of support for Kaide, Sakata just shined so much in this light novel again uh, when it came to like him supporting Kaede and being such a good big brother. We've known it before with the Panda Kaede stuff that happened back in season one of the anime. That Sakata is such a good big brother and he jumps through hoops to be able to help Kaede to the best of his ability for what she wants to do at the end of the day. Uh, he tries to give her some advice and like give her encouraging words. He's trying to help her feel better about things, helping her study, you know, having my Sakurajima. I mean, and my Sakurajima did it of her own free will too to help Kaede study and not the same thing uh, supporting her as well but he's doing so much for her and trying to make her feel comfortable and not put her down or like make her think that her uh, think that her dreams are just impossible thing that's not going to ever happen and stuff if she puts in the work and if they give her enough support he knows that she's going to have a good chance to be able to you know get into Minagahara High at the end of the day and on the other side of the spectrum too with Sakata I mentioned earlier that uh, this focused a little bit more on his future, what were his plans for the future? Where did he want to go? Did he want to go to university? Was he going to go out in the working field? What was going to happen with him? And he wanted to go to a university in Yokohama with Mai Sakurajima. Mai Sakurajima, she was in her third year during the eighth light novel here and she was going to be graduating uh, pretty soon and she was already taking college or university entrance exams for that Yokohama school that is pretty hard to get into and you need to you know be at a very high academic level and study a bunch to be able to uh, take that entrance exam and pass and get into it and Sakata you know he had his work cut out for him and he needed to do a lot of work and a lot of studying to be able to do it um, and I loved seeing Sakata have that dedication and have that discipline and that was definitely great to see out of Sakata because it was a big shift of mindset and 
character from what Sakata was previously, you know, back in season one or back in the Dreaming Girl movie where uh, he was definitely not a great study person. He was not a great, you know, school student. He was, you know, sleeping a lot of the time and not really paying attention. So, you know, kind of lazy or whatever, or just maybe not lazy, but he was just, you know, didn't really care that much. But now that my Sakurajima wants to go to this university and he wants to go to university with her, uh, it provides a lot of motivation for him to be able to, you know, buckle down and actually start studying. And my Sakurajima provides a lot of support for him uh, to kind of give him that motivation and to, you know, provide him with a bunch of different study books and things that he needs to study on to be able to get to the level to where he needs to take this entrance exam and pass it. Uh, which was nice of her to do, of course. And she was delaying her self going to university because she wants to go with Sakata. She's going to be graduating at the end of this current year that they're in right now. Sakata's in his second year. Uh, so once she graduates, Sakata still needs to go through his third year. So during that third year that Sakata is going to be going through for school, my Sakata Jima is going to be taking a break from school, wait for Sakata to graduate. And then once uh, Sakata, you know, gets into Yokohama, that uh, university, hopefully they're going to go to university together. And with mentioning that it was definitely a shift of Sakata's kind of character to be a good study person and, you know, being a good student and just kind of put in that effort when it comes to his academics, there was a bunch of teachers or at least a a couple of teachers that were a little surprised at the fact that he was doing these things or uh, saying that he wanted to go to this school in particular and putting in that work. And then Miwako on top of that too, uh, Kaede's counselor at one point, I remember Sakata and her were going to uh, look at a primarily an online based school and not a traditional, you know, in-person class school or whatever that was going to possibly be an option for Kaede to look into at some point. Uh, when they were walking over there, it set up things for the future because because spoiler alert, if you guys do not know, the title of volume 12 is Rascal Does Not Dream of My Student. And if you know the synopsis of it, it is uh, based on this girl, her name is Sada Himeji, that is Sakata student. So Sakata becomes a teacher later on. And at that point, when we got that information, I was tripping out because I was like, when did Sakata decide that he was going to be a teacher? And Miwako, the counselor, she was kind of giving him praise and, you know, letting him know how mature he was and how uh, she thought that and how good of a job that he was doing with Kaede that she thought that he would make a great teacher someday. And that was like, you know, planting the seed a little bit of, you know, letting him know that he might be good at that sort of thing and, you know, setting things up for the future for Sakata, you know, what his future is going to look like, what his occupation is going to be in the future. I'm not sure exactly to what extent him being a teacher is if it's just like a part-time thing or if it's actually something that he's trying to pursue um, and it's going to be like his full-time job and that's what he's passionate about or whatever it was nice seeing Milwaukee kind of let him know about that in the setup for him becoming a teacher at some point in the story and I mentioned earlier with Sakata's father him being a little bit more prevalent in the story as well as Sakata's mother Sakata's mother doesn't come into play into things into later on in volume 9 but Sakata's father comes into play in and is a little bit more present in this light novel for volume eight because he's you know having discussions about Kaede where her future is going to be because of course he is the parent um, you know Sakata is there for her a lot but he can't you know sign documents and you know he can't make a lot of those grown-up decisions because he's still a high schooler at the end of the day so his father is definitely there a lot more having a lot more discussions speaking to Sakata speaking to Kaede a little bit more but yeah it was nice seeing him a lot more present in the story and kind of his relationship with Sakata uh, because because with Sakata making the decision and looking into his uh, you know, future with going to university possibly, I remember at one point he was meaning to speak to his father about university and there had been so much conversation about where Kaede was going to go and how things were going to play out with her that Sakata's father was like, I know that Kaede's future and where she's going to go has been a hot topic, but what do you want to do? Where are you planning to go? What is your future you know, looking like in your head? Where do you want things to kind of end up and Sakata let him know like hey he wants to go to this school in Yokohama but he's going to need help he's going to need a lot of help when it comes to the financials part of it you know he's working at the restaurant right now but it wasn't going to be enough so he let his dad know like hey I'm going to need some help on that and his dad you know gave a little bit of a smile and it seemed like he enjoyed the fact that Sakata was leaning on him for that assistance for you know financial help and stuff I'm assuming he wants to you know be a lot more present and helpful in Sakata's life because it feels bad that he's not able to 
be there as much as he is right now because his mother at the time was in the hospital. So it was nice seeing that relationship there because they don't really have a ton of small talk amongst themselves. Um, you know, other than just saying like, you know, how are you? How is Kaede? Things of that nature. But seeing that conversation kind of pop up and seeing how he enjoyed the fact that, you know, he could be a father and support his child, you know, set up his future was awesome to see. It was a really like nice touching moment between them two. So going back and touching on some of the setup of the story and how great it was, you could definitely tell that it's what you would call maybe a new era of the Rascal Does Not Dream series with volume eight going forward because of them setting up new plot points going forward, setting up, uh, you know, introductions of characters, um, you know, mentioning of characters that we know that are going to be a little bit more prevalent in the story going forward, uh, bringing back old characters and even shifting some characters out of the story since it seems like their point in the story or their uh, their role in the story is kind of over with a little bit so it kind of pushes them off to the wayside just a tiny which I'll touch on in a little bit later so they mention some introductions on let's say Ikumi Akagi who is somebody that is more prevalent in volume 11 like I said with the Sakata kind of setting up for him becoming a teacher in the future another thing they mentioned of Toko Kirishima they mentioned her a couple of times in this as well and it's uh, like the mystery around Toko Kirishima as well which is very interesting to kind of dive into as well uh, they touch on the future of Kunimi, you know, Sakata's best friend, and touch on his occupation in the future, where his role is going to be in the future. Is he going to university or is he going to jump into the workforce? And he is not going to be going to university. He's going to be going to like, I believe, firefighter training or something like that. So he's going to, you know, be a firefighter in the near future. And I thought it was really nice when they were having that conversation between him and Sakata because he mentioned it being like Kunimi was like the best person, the most reliable person that he would think would be a firefighter because he is such a reliable, good friend, a good hearted person. He's like the ideal person for that type of job, you know, saving people and helping others and everything like that. It was just such a cool little conversation and an interesting point to see where he was going forward and how different it was from what everybody else had been discussing, you know, going to university and stuff like that. He was going a different route with his life. We didn't get a whole lot out of Futaba and what was going to happen with her in the future, you know, going to university or whatever her plans were going to be at that point. Um, hopefully we can get some answers to that a little bit later. Going back to Kaede and how things were going for her, how were her studies progressing? Uh, was she making progress with getting a little bit more comfortable outside, you know, in the outside world, getting a little bit more normal? And I thought that she did a very great job. Like I said, she was making that effort when it came to going to school and studying but at the same time too she was making strides when it came to going outside more being more brave she was you know she went to Sakata's uh, work the restaurant and stuff at one point Sakata was there working and they noticed that she was out there you know being hesitant and kind of struggling to go inside his actual work there because she had never been there before which was something that caught me off guard too I was like oh yeah she never has gone to his actual you know workplace before and seen it and interacted with him in that sort of way and saw him him, you know, in his role as, you know, a worker there, uh, which was nice to see her actually go there and be treated to some good food and stuff from Sakata. My Sakurajima was there as well, helping her out, providing some support uh, too. And then on top of that, she did some great work with, you know, getting used to going on the railways and things like that to be able to travel uh, the Inodens and things of that nature to go from point A to point B with, in all those crowds that, you know, how crazy it can be in Japan, going from one place to another during those busy times of days and just in general going there by herself she just took such great steps forward when it came to doing that stuff and she definitely pushed herself and put herself through a little bit of suffering when it came to it because you know she was scared that's a definitely a scary thing that was there for her going outside like I said it was big steps for her uh, to be going from where she was previously to you know going somewhere on the train the railways or whatever by herself to the school, you know, putting in her application to Minagahara High. Eventually, she was, you know, ready with her studies because she did a great job getting tutored by Nadaka, by Mai Sakajima, by Sakata, putting in great work herself and studying late nights um, to be able to get herself prepared for it. And she ended up, you know, taking the exam, but ended up kind of breaking down when it came to taking the exam. She took like the first morning half exams that took place. She had lunch and then she ended up breaking down because I believe she noticed 
noticed a student that was there taking the Minagahara exams there too. She was in a different class, but she saw her there and she was a student that went to Kaide school. So it brought back a whole bunch of trauma and memories and it was freaking her out thinking that she was looking at her and maybe judging her or whatever it was. Like I said, bringing back all that trauma and she ended up breaking down and not being able to finish the second half of the exams that were taking place there at Minagahara High. So there was some strange things that she was saying as well during the story that was kind of hinting at uh, something that was very important to why she was doing certain things. A very important piece of the story, like I mentioned before, being Panda Kaide. And she had been saying certain things along the lines of like, I can work hard too, or I can do this too, or whatever. She was like ultimately comparing herself to somebody else. And it was a little bit weird to Sakata and to other people. They were kind of like wondering what she was talking about when she was saying those certain things. Who is she comparing herself to? And she was comparing herself to Panda Kaide, which is a big point in the story of why she was doing certain things. Uh, when she ended up breaking down and she went to the nurse's office when she was taking the exam, Sakata and her had a like a conversation in the nurse's office and it got a little bit heated and it got very emotional on the side of Kaide and then as well as Sakata too because she let him know like hey like you liked the old Kaide the panda Kaide more than you liked me like she works harder than me and things like that and that's when kind of things uh, popped up and it made more sense of who she was talking about who she was comparing herself to she knew that panda Kaide was like a great person and that she was a super hard worker and brave and pushing herself and made these great bonds with my Sakurajima and not the and different things like that and that she felt like a nuisance and she felt like she wasn't good enough and that she had to replace that kaide she felt like they all liked the old panda kaide more than they liked her which was very far from the truth and sakata had a very tough time initially trying to explain that to her because it got a lot more heated than what he wanted it to turn out to and then another emotional part too that kind of killed me and almost made me kind of cry at this point was when Sakata you know kind of things got cut off at that point when they were having that heated conversation Sakata needed to go get Kaide's stuff in the other classroom and he found the diary of the panda Kaide that this Kaide was taking with her and he was looking through some of the pages from it and he saw a line there that really hit him hard that made him like almost break down and it was panda kaide's message like at one point or not a message but it was just one line that she put in there saying that she one day wanted to go to minagahara high uh, and that was one of her dreams she wanted to go there with sakata or uh, you know just like sakata did so not everything at that point was squashed between sakata and kaide after that heated conversation it kind of got cut off like i said by sakata having to go to the classroom and get Kaide's stuff and then him reading all of those things. But, you know, a couple of days passed after that and Sakataka kind of took some things into consideration with, you know, uh, Panda Kaide playing a big part in why this current Kaide wanted to go to Minagahara High. She didn't want to go because she actually wanted to go. She wanted to go because Panda Kaide, that was one of her dreams. And this current Kaide that regained her memories wanted to pay that Kaide back in a way by fulfilling one of her dreams and going to Minagahara High because she felt like she needed to because of all the hard work that Panda Kaide did put in for her and for her life. Um, so that was the reason why she wanted to go and not of her own volition and her own, you know, desire. So that was one thing that Sakata took into account and as well as, you know, what would might be a better option for Kaide when it comes to going to school since she didn't really want to go to Minagata High of her own desire. Where did she want to go? What might be a better option for her? And this is where Nautica comes into play again with helping Sakata set up something relating to Uzuki. So when they went to that whole the orientation or something like that or presentation of the online school before, they kind of went through a bunch of interviews and stuff with different students. It seemed like a very different thing than the norm of like traditional going to school and stuff. And they showed them all the different pictures and explanations of what this school does and how it functions and everything. But like I said, they uh, showed interviews from some of the students on how much they enjoyed this school. And one of the students that did pop up during those interviews was Uzuki Hirokawa. So this is where she comes into the story and up into the forefront of how important she was and her impact on Kaide. 
So at this point, we know that she goes to this school and she didn't go to a traditional high school and people were wondering, why didn't she? You know, she seems like such a bubbly personality, you know, a person that gets along with people well. Why would she need to go to this type of school? So at this point, Kaede and Sakata, Sakata took Kaede out one day. You know, they kind of squashed the awkwardness at that one point that they had after that heated conversation and Sakata took her to a mall to kind of walk around and stuff. Kaede was kind of not in the loop of what he was playing planning, but they uh, went to a Sweet Bullet concert that was there at the mall. It was a very short one, but the point of this was so Uzuki Hirokawa can kind of connect with Kaede and provide her with some insight and some advice and uh, let her know how things kind of worked for her when it came to her making that decision to go to this online school and how great it is. And like I said, giving her some insight on how it functions and how it can be a good thing. And hopefully, you know, getting to a point where it helps Kaede make a decision on what she wants to actually do. Does she want to continue to try to strive towards going to a traditional school? Or does she want to go this route with going to a possible online school that might be a little bit better for her? You know, she doesn't have to do the traditional thing and go with what everybody wants to do or what everybody does do. She can, you know, do something else and uh, stay her own sort of person and kind of go this route with her life when it comes to schooling and things of that nature. It was a very nice conversation that was had between Uzuki and Sakata and Kaede. And this was our first time really kind of sitting down and speaking, you know, with, with these characters, Sakata meeting Uzuki in person and Kaede as well and seeing her personality, seeing the deeper sides to Uzuki and how things kind of impacted her. It wasn't like a crazy thing that led to her going to this school. It was more so of like, you know, she didn't really fit in with a lot of the kids there. She was doing her idol stuff. She didn't really have a lot of time to, you know, hang out with a lot of the kids there. Um, things didn't get very hostile with her at that point. She just was like, you know, I really don't fit in. I don't feel comfortable or kind of something along those lines. So she was like, I don't want to go back to that school. And we also got introduced to Uzuki's mom who was there with her. And she was a very nice person as well. Took a liking to Sakata and, you know, was kind of having some good back and forth banter between Uzuki and Sakata as well. And she, uh, you know, enjoyed the company, enjoyed the conversation. Um, and we got some insight into her and how she was because she had Uzuki, I believe, when she she was like only 16 or 18 years old. I can't remember what age she was, but she was pretty young when she did have Uzuki as a child. So she was a teenage mom. It was difficult for her on her side too, but getting more insight into things, how things were for her and having a student or a child that, you know, was essentially a dropout and what the options were for her and her child at the end of the day of what was going to help her progress and things of that nature. Uh, so that's why she suggested the online school and, you know, Uzuki kind of ran with it and it ended up being a great thing that worked out for her at the end of the day. So after that whole conversation, they ended up like traveling over to Shichitagama Beach with Nadaka, Uzuki, Sakata, and Kaede, still continuing that great conversation and, you know, helping out Kaede, you know, Kaede was kind of blown away at some of the things that, you know, she was telling her and how things worked out for her and how she was such a, you know, great, like amazing idol. But at the same time, too, she went to this non-traditional school. So it kind of put things in perspective for her and helped her make that decision to ultimately go to this online school and kind of pursue this way rather than going the Minagahara route. But prior to the meeting between Uzuki Hirokawa and Sakata and Kaede, Sakata and Kaede had a nice little conversation that provided some relief to Kaede and then provided some reassurance from Sakata to Kaede as well. It was pretty much the resolution conversation that kind of tied things back up. Sakata letting her know that he supports her 100% in whatever she decides to do, whether she decides to go to Minagahara High or whether she decides to uh, go to this online school or something like that, whatever best benefits her and is gonna be like safe for her and make her feel more comfortable, then he's totally on board with it. They also mentioned the Panda Kaede at some point during this conversation. And Sakata let this Kaede know how hard of a worker the Panda Kaede was and how great she was and how it kind of really destroyed him or hit him very hard once the Panda Kaede went away and she regained her memories and stuff like that because he cared so deeply about the Panda Kaede. And Kaede almost took that kind of as a dig and kind of got really sad at that point. But Sakata, you know, gave her that reassurance and let her know like, hey, 
even though I was really distraught at what happened once she regained her memories, he was as happy as he can possibly be that he got his normal sister back, that she regained her memories and she doesn't have to replace the old Kaede. He loves her just as much as he loves the other Kaede. So Sakata during this conversation showed his care for this current Kaede and gave her that reassurance, like I said, for how much he does love her and how much he does care for her. So she won't have to worry about the question in her head of like, oh, does he like the other Kaede more than he likes me? And things of that nature. Do these friends that I've made along the way, you know, with my Sakata Jima and Nataka, do they like her more than they like me? Are they only my friends because they were friends with Panda Kaede? So hopefully this Kaede right now is a lot more comfortable in her own skin and kind of carries on and makes some progress more along the ways of, you know, her schooling and going outside and becomes more comfortable and not so anxious about the thought of what other people are thinking of her. So yeah, it was a nice conversation that kind of closed things out for her kind of adolescent syndrome stuff. Her adolescent syndrome, I'm sure it has not gone away completely, but um, at this point, it was something, like I said, that provided closure for her for something that she was really scared and wondering about. And another thing too that I wanted to mention is that Kaede, she ended up reuniting too with one of her old friends that was at her old school that she went to, the one that the bullying and stuff ended up taking place at. She ended up, you know, reuniting with that girl with the glasses that I think they ran into at some point um, that was very sad that she couldn't really help Kaede a little bit more when it came to the bullying situation and everything. She was very much so sorry that that stuff happened and regretted not being able to help her, like I said, and they ended up reuniting and reconnecting and stuff. And it was a very nice thing that happened that Kaede had somebody else that wasn't just affiliated with Sakata in some sort of way. You know, it was actually, you know, her friend, you know, Nadaka and Mai and everybody and Futaba, they're all, you know, her friends too, but this was somebody that she knew before she knew my Sakurajima, before she knew all these other people, Ryo Futaba, and before she knew Nadaka. So it was nice to see them kind of reconnect and have somebody that knew Kaede from back then and seeing the growth and, and maturity of her now because she made those grown up decisions to actually make the decision to not go to Minagahara High and choose to go to this online school. It's a very grown up thing to do rather than just going with what everybody else does or with going with what your parents want you to do or your siblings or whatever it may be, she made that grown up choice to, you know, go to this non traditional route. And uh, that friend that she had, I can't remember her name right now, but she very much so admired the fact that Kaede was a lot more grown up than what she was before, which was definitely a change in perspective from what we're seeing as a reader when we see all of these things happen with her, you know, breaking down and crying and not being sure of what to do. And, you know, her having her adolescent syndrome kind of issues kind of spring up and things of that nature. Seeing it from her perspective of what she saw Kaede before and what she's doing currently now was a nice thing to see. So out of all of that, Seeing Uzuki and her character and how much she helped Kaede and how much of an impact she had on her was such a great thing. Just her character in general, how bubbly she is, how likable she is, and then as well on top of that, on how much she helped them make that decision and uh, providing that comfort and insight and, and everything that she kind of brought forth to the table when it came to helping Kaede or just, you know, progressing the story was really awesome. And, and I loved her character when we got to learn a lot more of her. But jumping over a little bit more so towards the end of the story before the story ends up ending there was as i mentioned before they kind of shifted a character out of the story so shoko pops back into the story so this is the one that gets kind of pushed out of the story i'd say a little bit so she comes back in and she visited uh sakata at his work at the restaurant there and they end up sitting down having a conversation and she brings up the fact that she's going to be moving away sadly uh it was something that kind of hit me a little bit i was like oh like shoko is going away that sucks she's gonna be moving kind of far away i think she's moving to like Okinawa or something along those lines because I believe the cold weather kind of affects her a lot more than what kind of like warmer nicer weather kind of affects her so they're kind of moving away over there away from where they're currently at right now so she's not going to be around them she's not going to see them anymore really which is a sad thing like I said kind of her moving out of the story which is understandable because of the fact that she played her role in the story with the whole dreaming girl stuff and things that happened at the end of season one of the story of the rascal does not dream series so 
her going away makes sense. You know, she's done her part. There's a lot more characters that are going to be introduced and that have been introduced that are going to play a role in this. So, you know, she played her part and she's going to be kind of shifted out of the story as of right now. Maybe she'll pop back up in the future and stuff, but um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. But before Shoko did leave, she did mention something very mysterious and very interesting that did happen that was setting up for the future related to Toko Kitashima. Earlier in the story here for Volume 8, Mai Sakurajima did uh, bring up Toko Kitashima because she is a singer and she like held the little earbud out for Sakata to kind of listen to the music and everything. And it was some pretty nice visuals and amazing singing. But I believe like the face of Toko Kitashima was very blurry. You couldn't tell who actually was, uh, which is why there's so much mystery around Toko Kitashima, I believe. And Shoko mentioned here that she, when she was going through all this stuff, you know, there's the little Shoko and then there's the big Shoko and then, you know, everything that happened with the redo and everything. So there was multiple timelines that this Shoko lived in that she had memories of in every single timeline that she experienced and has memories of. She does not remember Toko Kirishima being a thing. She does not have memories of Toko Kirishima out of all of those timelines other than the one that they're currently in right now. So something might have happened. There's something possibly going on with adolescence syndrome or some butterfly effect thing that turned into adolescent syndrome that happened when they did the redo possibly you know when my Sakajima died they did the redo and things turned out a different way and my Sakajima is alive Sakata's alive and you know they're all living happily Shoko's alive because she got a transplant all that stuff but because of that happening there's possibly a adolescent syndrome that you know sprung up because of it and now Toko Kitashima is you know a singer popular famous kind of person or whatever uh, at least to some extent and uh, she wasn't possibly before in those other timelines they did something to possibly cause for you know her to become this you know famous ish kind of person but we need to figure out who she is and if there's something bad going on or whatever things might pop up from this you know plot point in the story which was interesting like I said I am super excited to see that because I thought it was a very interesting thing that she brought up of that in Toko Kirishima just the mystery of it it just got me going and I was like oh I want to find out what's going on with her it was just something very exciting and then after that you know Shoko ends up moving away uh, she ends up flying away to Okinawa and then my Sakurajima's graduation ends up happening so she ends up graduating it was very quick it wasn't something that they really spent a whole lot of time on which was a little bit sad I thought they were going to spend some more time on her graduation in particular but you know with that happening she did end up graduating they were supposed to meet up on Shichirigama Beach uh, Sakata and my Sakajima after the graduation and before that does end up happening that's when Sakata runs into the little my Sakurajima and it ends the light novel and kicks off and sets up things for volume nine going forward which is freaking awesome to see I, I enjoyed the read for volume eight so much it was so cool like i said set up a bunch of different little things address some important stuff that needed to be addressed with kaide and with sakata and just uh, you know the future of the story and things of that nature seeing all the characters again or at least you know in some fashion and reading about them and what's going to happen in the future going forward and things getting resolved to some extent it was awesome to see new mysteries kind of coming to the forefront it was great I, I enjoyed this light novel a lot if i had to rate the volume 8 light novel i'd probably give it like a 9 or so i wouldn't give it like a 10 because it wasn't like incredibly amazing like something super groundbreaking or anything like that it was just a very awesome, great read, set up story that addressed some good plot points within the story. And, you know, it was very enjoyable to read. I, I loved it. But like I said, I wouldn't give it a 10 because it wasn't like something that like changed the medium. 10 out of 10 is reserved for something that is like freaking amazing, like absolutely stunning. You know, uh, this light novel was awesome and I freaking loved the heck out of it too but I wouldn't say it was like on that level. I give it, like I said, a nine out of 10. Other people might rate it differently than me. I know there's some people that didn't like it as much because it's not my Sakurajima focused, of course. You know, there's other characters other than my Sakurajima. So this was definitely something that highlighted a very much needed character and a very much needed, you know, set of events that needed to take place in this story. So I liked it a lot. Like I said, there's some other people that didn't like it as much because it wasn't super my Sakurajima focused and it wasn't super adolescent syndrome really heavy I'd say you know with a new adolescent syndrome coming to the forefront and being the focus in this story it was still focusing on Kaede and her kind of struggles and a little bit to an extent of her adolescent syndrome and I was hoping to bundle this review into both parts for volume 8 and volume 9 but I think I'm running a lot longer than what I thought I was going to on this review for volume 8 so I'll probably you know cut it off right here 
do a part two to this review for volume eight, volume nine, or just put this one out as its own sole like volume eight review. And then, you know, do my volume nine review after I'm done talking about that one and then put that one out too. But yeah, expect that volume nine one in the near future here as well, uh, because I'm going to be doing that one. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed the review for volume eight and talking about this stuff. Let me know if you guys have read the light novel, what you guys thought about it down below. It was awesome. In my opinion, let me know what you guys loved about it, what you guys you know had some nitpicks on in particular, what you guys are excited for in the future of the Rascal Does Not Dream series. And maybe you haven't read it yet and you're excited to read it or you're excited for the movie that's upcoming and you're going to consume it that way and watch the movie rather than reading the light novel or something along those lines. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button down below. I'd greatly appreciate it. Helps me out a ton, helps out the channel. Make sure to hit that subscribe button as well if you haven't already and hit that notification bell too to get notified for whenever I do upload a video. Go live or do anything fun like that. But hope you all enjoyed the review. Hope you all enjoyed the video and I will catch you all later. See ya. Bye-bye.